Good day! Hey YouTube, it's Mr. Shinister, and today we're going to be doing our first ever Mr. Shinister review. The game featured today is the brand new Outriders demo, and this was suggested by subscriber Dr. Janitor64. So thanks, Doc, and if you guys like this kind of thing, we'll do some more of these. Let us know what you would want to see reviewed next in the comments section. Outriders came from Square Enix and their studio, People Can Fly, and it looks incredible. They've made a sci-fi division that feels like Gears of Wars, honestly. I get a touch of Mass Effect in there as well. Before you finally start playing, you are going to get a chance to customize your character. And this is the first place I felt a little underwhelmed. There does not seem to be a whole boatload of decisions you can make here that maybe we've been spoiled with in other games like height, weight, relative age, and you get what feels like a very limited number of skin tones and hairstyles. Now, I will get that some of those decisions were probably made because of how they would fit in with the story, and this game seems more action-focused anyways than RPG-focused. The next thing you choose is your name, and I will say the frustrating thing with this is there are some parameters like no spaces, and when you finally decided to go with something great like QWERTY McSwaggins, no one else will see that name again. So it's just for you to know and will legitimately never come up. Even when playing with a friend, they're just going to see your Xbox, PSN, or Steam username. This game does offer cross-platform play, which actually seemed to work really well. But what the game does not do super well is spelling out how to do it. Initially, you'll have to complete the prologue to the game, which is probably pretty standard, but then you'll also have to open up your options and enable cross-platform play. The game starts off with a prologue section that is full of a lot of exposition, some basic mechanics like how to get into cover and shoot, which, by the way, is going to come up a lot, and shows off some of the game's incredible writing. No more way around bullets, not kids. The prologue will conclude with the character waking up from cryo sleep, which seems like a pretty original. Oh, Halo and Fallout. The prologue will conclude with your character being able to choose from four different character ability types, which can't be changed once selected. The switch from other looter shooters, these abilities are going to give you some different ways outside of strictly getting into cover and firing, and they'll also directly impact how your character self heals. Another one of the big options upon completing. The prologue is going to be the loot tier you want to select, and I recommend going with the highest available option. In fact, I kind of think it's unfortunate that all tiers are not available at the start of the game, because as you will see, the game's opening AI is not incredibly difficult, you can basically ignore a lot of your cover options and just rush enemies, especially if you are playing in a party, because their aggro does not necessarily seem fixed to whoever is closest to them. I was able to get on top of my enemies a few times and just shoot them, sometimes they're not even going to be able to hit you. This game puts you into pretty point A to point B missions, where you clear an area out of troops and then move into the next area. I felt myself wondering if I was playing Gears of War a few times while playing this, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but also these areas could sometimes feel like a chore, and the honest truth is that the gunplay doesn't feel very tight. There feels like there are several wonky hitboxes in this game, when you're shooting at someone behind cover. This honestly isn't something I would have expected from a studio that helped port Gears of War less than a decade earlier. I will say, where that portion of the game seems to lack ingenuity, it feels like a borrowed mechanic, your character has these special group of abilities they can use to help them in this onslaught, and these abilities feel unique to their character. The character I chose, for example, could slow and freeze enemies with a time mechanic. These abilities are new to this style of game, for me at least. Outriders also comes complete with a pretty decent fast travel mechanic, and actually has some nice choice-driven dialogue that really adds to the game experience. How about a little hot tea? If the constant battle to get into cover wasn't too much for you, another mechanic that you can and will use repeatedly is the tactical roll. In fact, there are some segments of gameplay you'll be using this role so much, you won't be sure that the latest Dark Souls didn't just get a reskin. The roles themselves seem very fluid and well-designed, but also they kind of add to this idea that the AI is not super strong, at least early in the game. 
I do want to add as a positive that the game itself actually runs really well outside of some hitbox issues I've noticed. The first boss battle rolled around, and it was more of the same. There was only one enemy, and in a game that's supposed to be party-based, like, all you're doing is trading aggro and pumping him with bullets. This is a 4 out of 10 from me. I'll bump it to a 6 out of 10, only because I'm biased against these types of games. You guys, have a great day. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. What? <laughs>